tried to void of any ideas to help improve the country. The left in America, completely humiliated after 2016, they are now desperate. Every two and four years, you have heard me say this often, we've become accustomed to their playbook. Republicans, racist, sexist, homo, you know the whole list, et cetera. But over the past 21 months, we have seen something even worse than what we usually see. Name calling, identity politics, that just wasn't enough. Instead, we've watched the left for two years now vilify this president, any conservative, any Republican, now calling on their supporters to literally create crowds, confront so-called evil opponents that are, happen to just disagree with them. Hillary Clinton said, you can't be civil with a Republican Party member that wants to destroy American values. And there's Maxine Waters, one of the new leaders of the Democratic Party, urging her supporters, create crowds, go after Republicans, where they eat, in grocery stores, department stores, gas stations. Cory Booker urging voters, get up in the faces of people in Congress and the cabinet. Eric Holder, Republicans go low. We we kick them. This kind of rhetoric started from the very moment Donald Trump, frankly, came down the escalator, but certainly when he was inaugurated. In fact, on January 31st, right after the president's inaugurated, 2017, failed vice presidential candidate Tim Kaine. Just to remind you, he had this to say about what Democrats need to do in order to reclaim their power. They were looking for it on day one. Watch this. All right, apparently we lost that tape. On this program, we're saying this better stop. This is what I'm saying to everybody. This better stop before people, our fellow citizens, some of our elected politicians are severely injured or even killed. In this country, differences should be settled at the ballot box, not on the streets, not with a violent mob, not with fists or intimidation, not with riots in major cities. And as you can see, this is not the approach Democrats are taking. And while words are just words, I understand, I hold people accountable for their own actions. But some people are inspired by these words, sadly. Are we really surprised by what we have been witnessing, what we've all been seeing? Sarah Sanders, her family, kids run out of a restaurant. Secretary Nielsen, same thing. Senator Ted Cruz, his wife Heidi, run out of a restaurant. The Florida Attorney General, Pam Bondi, violently confronted, just trying to go watch a movie. Republicans shouted down all over D.C. And reports tonight in Minnesota, two local Republican candidates were assaulted by far left individuals. In one case, while talking to constituents, state representative candidate Shane Mecklen literally was sucker punched. Not only does he have a serious concussion, he will have a four to six week minimum recovery. He says this is not what he signed up for. No kidding. A few days earlier, while campaigning door to door, state representative, Minnesota, Sarah Anderson, she was punched by a person claiming to be an anarchist. And meanwhile, Nevada, a Democratic operative, arrested after violently assaulting GOP campaign manager Kristen Davison after a political event in Vegas. Nevada's attorney general, now the Republican gubernatorial candidate, called this a new low for politics in Nevada. And last night, Senator Lindsey Graham, who will join us in a moment, he talked about how he was actually spat at during the anti-Kavanaugh protests. Listen, a threatening package was sent to Susan Collins' home with contents they claimed to be ricin, a poison that can kill people. Her staff receiving thousands of coat hangers, other horrible threats via phone. Make no mistakes. What we're seeing here is the left unhinged in America, and they've been unhinged the day that Donald Trump announced, certainly the day he won, and the day he was inaugurated, and they have not stopped. They are hoping that this vitriol, this hatred, where they even get rid of due process and the presumption of innocence, they're hoping this is what carries them into November. And if Democrats take the House, I've been telling you, and it's true, impeachment will be on the table. They just keep begging Maxine Waters, just, just keep it a secret. Just like the Center for American Progress says, don't talk about ever immigration. It's a losing issue. Just pretend you're somebody you're not. How does that help the American people? What does that do to create jobs? How does that make us more prosperous? How does that make us and our families more safe and secure? Investigations into this administration, if Nancy Pelosi wins, Chuck Schumer wins, it will be a daily subversion. Obamacare, that will be the law of the land. How's that working out? Keep your doctor plan and 
pay less. Remember the crumbs? They were so upset about your tax decrease. Your paycheck, well, your paycheck will get smaller. And of course, they want to abolish ICE, forget about the border wall, but they just don't want to tell you. But you don't have to take my word for it. Just listen to Nancy Pelosi. She's measuring the drapes to her brand new office. Take a look. It's an interesting dynamic when you have the gavel. It just makes all the difference in the world and the leverage you have in your conversation. I'm wondering what you'd be willing to trade if you gave Trump the wall. Nothing. In my view, it's immoral, expensive, ineffective, and not something that people do between countries. Um, but in any event, uh, it happens to be like a manhood issue for the president. <laughs> and um, I'm not interested in that. Those are her plans. By the way, we found that Tim Kaine tape we were talking about. This is right after Trump won. Listen to what he thinks you ought to do, what he wants the Democrats to do. Take a look. The way we get outside the bubble mm -hmm. is we take advantage of this tremendous uh, public outcry against the administration. What we've got to do is fight in Congress, fight in the courts, fight in the streets, fight online, fight at the ballot box. And now there's the momentum to be able to do this. And we're not afraid of the popular outcry. We're energized by it. And that's going to help us do our job and do it better. Oh, OK. Nancy Pelosi, by the way, she might want to keep her big plans in check because the big blue Blue wave she's predicting. Nobody that tells you they know what's going to happen on election night, none of them know what they're talking about. You know why? Because you, we, the people, we get a say in this. According to a new study from NBC News, Democratic GOP voter registrations, guess what? They're at the exact same level they've been as past election cycles. Now, this means there has been no huge increase in Democratic voters nationwide. In the race for the Senate, Republicans do have good momentum and for good reason. Senator Dianne Feinstein, whose dirty political tricks surrounding the Kavanaugh nomination shocked many Americans, no due process, no presumption of it of innocence at all, believing any and all allegations with no corroboration. Oh, she announced she's planning to continue her war on Justice Kavanaugh if Democrats take back the Senate. And she actually wants Kavanaugh's sexual misconduct investigation reopened. This after seven FBI investigations, including the one she wanted, found zero evidence to support any of the claims against the Supreme Court justice. Meanwhile, tonight in Florida, we are tracking two key races, including a very tight gubernatorial race between far radical left Democratic candidate Andrew Gillum and Republican Freedom Caucus member Ron DeSantis. Gillum is calling for the, get this, a 40 percent tax increase for Florida business. If you're in Florida, let me tell you what that would do. It will wreck your economy. It will destroy any incentive for anybody to build a business in Florida, 40%. And Gillum also has been called one of the most anti-law enforcement candidates in history. The choice in Florida, pay attention, is clear. You have far-left socialism, Ron DeSantis. You have a choice in the Senate in Florida. One of the most capable, honest, decent, hardworking, trustworthy governors who's been successful in the entire country. Rick Scott, running against confirmed far left, out of touch, Chuck Schumer, incumbent, Bill Nelson. Florida, wake up, you gotta get out and vote. To support Rick Scott, Ron DeSantis, or guess what? Your state, gonna become right like this state, New York, 10% state income tax, or California, 13.5% state income tax. In Florida, you have zero state income tax. You might want to keep it that way. And in just moments, we're going to have on two Republican Senate candidates, Martha McSally in Arizona, Josh Hawley, Missouri, Hawley running against incumbent Democrat Claire McCaskill. This week, ProjectVeritas.com exposing McCaskill for just how far left her views are in a series of undercover videos, including, of course, her extreme views on gun control, her campaign's plan to lie to the good people of Missouri. No, 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 we're not going to really do this, but we just have to act this way and present McCaskill as a moderate, which she's not. She says she's just like Barack Obama. Take a look. So you would be on board with, with bump, the bump stocks? Of course, of course. Bump stocks, oh, I've voted high capacity for, mags. I've, I've voted for most of those things before. So for a ban? Oh, no, yeah. But she doesn't like openly go out and support groups like Moms Demand Action or just like other groups that are like 
related to that because that could hurt like people her like her ability to get elected you're saying that you think she's more progressive than she lets on yeah i think so, I think so too i, I think, think she's she wants a lot more, more open-minded to like alternative like routes to things mm -hmm. but she can't be open about that why not you know? Because she would completely isolate her, like the moderate Republicans. Oh. Yeah. It's like we have to, we have to lie to get elected. Essentially. Essentially. And according to a new ad, it looks like McCaskill has given up on gaining any support in some very large areas of the state of Missouri because her views are too liberal. She knows she's too, she's out of touch. She doesn't care. Apparently, take a look. Claire McCaskill, caught on tape. If we do our job in St. Louis County, you know, I can give up a few votes in the booty hill. Listen again. I can give up a few votes in the booty hill. No wonder Claire McCaskill votes against your gun rights, against agriculture, and against conservative judges like Brett Kavanaugh. I can give up a few votes in the booty hill. Claire McCaskill has given up on you. I'm Josh Hawley, and I approve this message. I just want the city. I don't care about the rest of the state. I just want the big population center. Now, tonight, without any evidence, McCaskill is claiming that the Holy Campaign coordinated with Project Veritas, an allegation that Project Veritas and its founder, James O'Keefe, has told me numerous times now is not true. Holy is called absurd. And Josh Holy will be here tonight to talk about the phony, the fake, the fraud, somebody lying to get elected, and that would be Claire McCaskill. Meanwhile, until Tennessee Democratic candidate Phil Bredesen. Well, he's also been exposed for his far left deception in Tennessee. Staffers all caught on tape, on camera, telling the truth about, oh, we're just saying that. We don't really mean it. We're just saying that to just get votes. That's all. Although their boss, Phil Bredesen, publicly claimed support for Judge Kavanaugh, his staffers, undercover video, Project Veritas, he's caught saying the Democratic candidate would never ever support Trump's pick for the Supreme Court after the election. Let's just say whatever we need to say to win. Watch this. Because, I mean, he wouldn't really, right? What? Vote for Kavanaugh? I don't think so. But I was so confused because I just can't believe that he would actually vote yes. Like, I oh, have he wouldn't. And, but he's saying he would. It's politics. So, Which I don't know if that makes it worse or better. No, it makes it better, but it's still... But what's the, like, I don't understand what's to gain by saying yes. Moderate Republicans. He wouldn't. He just said he would. It's, it's all a lie. Arizona, Martha McSally, a war hero, taking on Kristen Cinema. This is amazing. A woman with a pretty bizarre and despicable past. Actually, in 2010, Cinema called Arizona the state she wants votes, the meth lab of democracy. Really? Take a look. States are the laboratories of democracy, and then my state, Arizona, is clearly the meth lab of democracy. <laughs> Pay attention, Arizona. You think that's bad? It gets worse. Caught on camera multiple times calling you, the voters, the people of Arizona. You're all crazy. She's not. You're crazy. Take a look. And I want to talk to you about some of the things that I think that you can do to stop your state from becoming Arizona. You know, my state, I was born and raised in Arizona, born and raised in Tucson near the border and uh, gosh, when we grew up I remember in first grade we learned the song about Arizona because Arizona is the state of the five C's so cattle copper citrus cotton and climate and those were the five things that our state historically made its money off of but I would add a sixth C it's called crazy <laughs> All of you in Arizona, boop, 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 boop. you're all crazy. Cinema making fun of her own state for being famous, but only in a Lindsay Lohan kind of way. I'm sure she meant it as a compliment, though. Take a look. But, um, yeah, so all around the world, people know what's happening in Arizona, and not in a good way. Right? We're not famous, like, in a good way. We're kind of like in a Lindsay Lohan kind of famous way. <laughs> not good. So and it gets worse and it gets more serious. Cinema suggesting it was okay after 9-11 in 2003 for Americans to go fight for the Taliban. And she also promoted events at Arizona State University featuring a radical far left lawyer. You know, the one that represented the blind shake, same lawyer who was in prison for helping the blind shake get messages to his extremist followers. And by the way, cinema organizing this is almost too good to be true. An anti-war rally inviting self-described witches. 
You can't make it up. And this week during a debate, McSally confronted her radical opponent. Watch this. Good moment. While we were in harm's way, she was protesting our troops in a pink tutu. And I'll tell you what, if these are not disqualifying enough, Kirsten, what came out last week, CNN reported that in 2003, while she was on the radio, you said it was okay for Americans to join the Taliban to fight All against right. us. We, you said we, you had no problem We're running that. out of time, Kirsten, but we have to let you respond to right that. I want to ask right now whether Please. you're going to apologize to the veterans Please. and me for saying it's okay Please. to commit treason. We are running Kirsten. out of time, so we got to get a response. Well, we need a response because she owes us an apology. Please. Well, Martha has chosen to run a campaign like the one you're seeing right now. It's Where treason. she's engaging in ridiculous attacks and smearing my campaign. And she's just trying to cut, cut, cut and not share the full picture. And she was the war hero. You're the one that said what you said. McMally, uh, McMissally will be here in a minute. Here's the bottom line. Any vote for any House Democrat, let me just tell you, you're voting for Pelosi impeachment, higher taxes, open borders, and Obamacare. You vote for any Democrat in the Senate, you're voting for Chuck Schumer. And the same agenda, and by the way, add to that, no conservative Supreme Court justices. We're going to be discussing the results. Three weeks from tonight, you have the power to shock the world. Just imagine how fun it'll be on election night to see the media lose it again. Be awesome. You have the power. Shock the world. We'll have more on this in a moment. First, we have to cover one abuse of power story breaking just minutes ago. John Solomon, new report detailing, get this, how high-ranking members of the FBI and DOJ get this, accepting hundreds of trips from special interest groups. And according to Solomon, guess who? Mueller deputy, his pit bull, Andrew Weissman, the top offender. All right, we'll get back to that in the days and weeks ahead. First, the story, our big story, our top story, the midterm elections. We have Missouri Senate candidate Josh Hawley, Arizona Senate candidate Martha McSally. Martha, uh, you were serving after 9-11, correct? Yes, I was, Sean. I was actually deployed at, on 9-11 and was part of the team to ramp up for the initial air campaign in Afghanistan. And later, I commanded an A-10 squadron getting shot at by the Taliban in Afghanistan and making sure that we were taking them out as they were trying to kill our troops. This is personal. Maybe it's okay as you can call Arizonans crazy and the meth capital and all that, but it gets serious. Yeah. It's okay to join the Taliban. Seriously. She said John, it. I mean, How is that a smear yeah. if you're just asking for an apology for what she did and said? I, I simply asked for an apology. She could have said, I didn't mean it. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, but when you as an American are saying it's okay for Americans to go fight for the Taliban against our troops, uh, when we were over in Afghanistan, we would we would line up on the, the taxiway when we would have American troops who, 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 who perished in a line of duty with the flag draping their co coffin coming by as they were loaded onto the cargo planes and we would all line up silently and, and salute them because they paid the ultimate sacrifice and were killed by the Taliban and their allies. And somehow she thinks this is either funny or is not important. Uh, the, it real, I mean, this is unbelievable that she thinks it's okay for Americans to commit treason. In any other moment, this would be disqualifying yeah. and she would withdraw. But the Arizona media mostly is uh, ignoring it or making excuses for her again. By the way, th thank you for your brave, courageous service. Thank you for that. But then it gets even worse. Mm -hmm. She invited this far left radical lawyer who represented mm -hmm. the blind shake. My buddy Andy McCarthy, a guest on this program, he successfully prosecuted that case. The same lawyer, wasn't she in prison for helping get messages from the blind shake? to others at the time? Wasn't yes. there an investigation into that? She invited that person to Arizona State? Yes. She invited her to Arizona State University, was making excuses again, and this person, um, from all the evidence, you know, McCarthy is uh, key on this, was aiding and abetting uh, the blind shake. And again, she's making excuses for it. And no one in Arizona, unless they're watching your show, uh, which are a lot of people, don't get me wrong, but I, other people, the mainstream media, is just completely ignoring all yeah, this stuff. And they're pretending none of it happened. The, that's what, thank God and goodness we have one network that at least I have my voice, because otherwise you'd never hear about it. Josh, Amen, welcome Sean. to you. I look at that tape, and I look at the campaign ad you made, and I see a candidate that brags about being anti-Second Amendment and brags about lying to the people of Missouri and saying, I don't care about these people in my state, and I vote just like Obama and believe what he does. 
You know, you see a candidate there, Sean, who is totally out of touch with the people of the state, someone who has given up on large portions of the state and really has given up on representing the state. And that's the problem with Senator McCaskill. She does not represent the people of Missouri. She's become a party line politician, and that's why we're going to replace her in November. What's the reaction to the fact that she's exposed, purposefully lying to the people that she's asking to vote for them? I got to imagine people of Missouri, I'd be angry. I don't like to be lied to. My kids get in more trouble if they lie to me than whatever it is that they did. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and people are having just that reaction, Sean. You know, they are, as I travel around the state, people cannot believe that she has tried to portray herself as a moderate when, in fact, she votes with Chuck Schumer 90 percent of the time, when, in fact, she's for taking away firearms from law-abiding citizens, when, in fact, she is against pro-Constitution judges. And this Brett Kavanaugh smear, uh, Claire McCaskill was part and parcel. She was along for the whole ride. She wouldn't stand up for her party. People are tired of this. They want somebody who's going to do what they say they will do. Listen, I know it's difficult in these off-years elections. Both of you repre would represent a refreshing change and help the president's successful agenda. Martha McSally, great to meet you, see you. Josh, best of luck to you, too. I hope Thank people you. are paying attention. This is an, these are important races. When we come back, David Limbaugh, Tammy Bruce, Newt Gingrich,